You are listening to an American Free Press podcast. Joining me on the line is Mark Anderson from Austria, covering Bilderberg for the fourth audio interview. Mark, thanks for joining us again. Great to be back. We're just keeping it up and moving strong here. So, so we spoke almost exactly 24 hours ago. Why don't you fill the listeners in on what has occurred? Anything significant since that time? Our photo project was, by all accounts, a smashing success. In cooperation with We Are Chain Switzerland, some of my best contacts since I started covering Bilderberg with Tucker back in Spain 2010, they did a bang-up job after we did some planning on June 10. By June 11 yesterday, they went out to Innsbruck Airport, and we were closer than any of the other mainstream photographers. We were the only ones out on the actual tarmac. The main photographer working with me was only 20 feet away from Eric Schmidt of Google, and that's why by the time many will see the AFP website and listen to this podcast, they'll likely see that photo of Eric Schmidt of Google giving a kind of irreverent look out the window at our photographer. It's rather humorous. It's a good photo to see. We got around as best we could the extreme isolation of their hotel and the invisibility of it from street level, even without all the heavy security, which is extra tight this year. We're really elated about that. The weather cooperated. And when they depart on Sunday, we're going to get more of them. I know you said the photographer was about 20 feet from Schmidt. How about you? Were you actually within eye shot of him? No, no. I simply helped strategize, and I was more in the background. We went there the day before. My main involvement was the day before the photographing to get the lay of the land and give some input and some do's and don'ts and just my take on what would work. And it worked out very well. A little bit of networking with We Are Change Switzerland. They had the better cameras than I, and it worked out great. Okay. How did he get that close, did he say? Thomas is his name. He's just disarmingly harmless looking, the kind of guy that everybody likes to have around. And he just looked like he belonged there and took the photos. They just kind of came in looking like they had a lot of jet lag or rather disheveled look among many of the Bilderbergers, the attendees coming in, like they'd been on a plane a long time and needed a shower. Oh, maybe they weren't real, real vigilant about their surroundings. Now, this We Are Change, that was founded by this fellow, Luke Rutkowski? I believe he founded it, yeah, in New York, and then they started getting different chapters. They were initially built around the 9-11 issue, and then they branched out to other issues. Okay, and as far as you know, they're not affiliated with someone like George Soros? As far as I know, they are not. Yes, it's interesting. They're a pretty big organization. You would think that they would be in that online encyclopedia, Wikipedia, but they're not. That's curious. You know, I've never had a reason to look them up on there. But, uh, yeah, that's a curious point. Strange. Besides the photos, anything else significant happen? Well, the European press coverage that I feared coming into Bilderberg, even days and weeks before it, but even right on the brink of it, which I feared might be declining compared to past years, I'm pleasantly surprised that the European press coverage is pretty brisk overall. We add another paper to the mix yet today, and we were talking on the last podcast, Dave, about the paparazzi. Well, a slightly paparazzi-style tabloid picked up on Bilderberg. It's called the Kronen Zeitung, Kronen Zeitung. And it's in the greater Tyrol area, this region of Western Austria. And they picked up on it, adding to what the courier picked up on that I mentioned in the last podcast. And the one doing the most work on it is this Tyroler Tagzitkung. Forgive my dangerously deplorable German there. You know, again, the U.S. media is a distant last in the race, you might say, if they're even on the racetrack, yeah. except for American Free Press. And I don't say that out of boasting. It's just that they're so lazy and so out of touch with these things. You know, they're all over the G7, but they just can't seem to find five feet away down the road any ink or paper for Bilderberg. That's it's amazing. Deplor- it is deplorable. It's deplorable. If there's a rainstorm nearby, they'll report about that. You know, oh, the weather is always good, you know, but let's not talk about the dark figures of Bilderberg. It's amazing. You were talking, I believe it was yesterday, you had brought up Michael Collins Piper, and you wanted to say a word about him. And you also right. mentioned that he had contributed to our knowledge of Bilderberg. And as it turned out, of course, we've got literally thousands of articles up on the American Free Press website. One of them popped up, and it was that article that Mike Piper wrote about Bilderberg uh-huh. back in 2012. Oh, wow. And he brought up what we had mentioned, how Tucker would say that if 140 of the top celebrities or sports figures were meeting, obviously they would go nuts about that. They would just be all over the place. But here, like you said, they'd rather report about a thunderstorm, anything but report about this. 
it's like they're going out of their way to make sure that they don't say anything about Bilderberg. Yeah, what's most disturbing about that is a quick observation as we wind up this brisk podcast, and I've got some context to check out and see how today's going to go. Today's a really critical day, the Friday of Bilderberg always is, before we get into the weekend. It's interesting that the free speech laws and legal protections for free speech, generally speaking, are not as good in Europe or even Canada compared to the U.S., and yet the irony is, is that despite that, you see things in the European press, not just Bilderberg, but other things that you don't read in the American press. It's almost like we have the freedom and we don't exercise it, and they don't have as much freedom legally, but they push the envelope. Yeah, that makes sense. Strange irony there. What you have, you take for granted, right? I guess it's that phenomenon. All in all, the European media reporting is pretty good. It's picking up. We got great photos. We got around this very, very difficult barricade of looking like we'd get no photos anywhere. We have another chance to get them when they depart Sunday. And by tomorrow, by our next podcast, I'm hoping to have more information. I've been running around 10 different directions, especially since they began yesterday meeting at Hotel Inner Alp. And I'm hoping to try and glean more information if it's there on if any of these presidential candidates have been snuck in here. I I think we need to know that because that precedent has been set at Bilderberg, Bill Clinton in 1991 in Baden-Baden, Germany, right before he became president. But I want to mention something that might sound like a tangent, but it's not. Recall that Klaus Kleinfeld of Alcoa is a member of that powerful business lobby, the Business Roundtable, and he also happens to be on the Bilderberg Steering Committee. And recall that in another article I did, the Business Roundtable is really pushing for fast track for Barack Obama so he can finalize two Bilderberg-friendly trade deals, the transatlantic and transpacific deals. That is getting into critical stage right now. I want to point that out. The vote could come possibly today. So I would encourage all listeners, and there'll be articles on this that I'm going to get up as fast as possible, even mixed in with Bilderberg coverage, again, to call Congress and call their congressmen and, you know, really hammer them against fast track for Obama, because that would be a Bilderberg victory if they get that fast track. And that number is always 202-224-3121 to reach the Capitol switchboard. That's 202-224-3121, or you can dial 202-225-3121. Mark, thanks for the update. Appreciate it. And happy hunting today. And looking forward to hearing about what you uncovered in our next interview. Yeah, I'll give you a little heads up. It's very tentative, and I don't know all the facts, but there's a guy that has a rental, he tells me, and he says it's near the Hotel Inner Alpen where Bilderberg is meeting. He claims that if you have a residence, that they can't prevent you from going home. And he can have a guest as long as that guest is with him and doesn't depart from him. So I'm going to see if that's available to where I might be able to get a little bit of a perch and see something. It might not work out. The guy's a little bit flighty, but I'm hoping that maybe I can get a little closer to where the action is. Fingers crossed type thing. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck. Keep us posted. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave.